In this lesson, we will talk about how forces are generated. Let's consider our previous example where a box is at rest on a horizontal surface. Now, let's consider the situation where you are pushing the box So, you can cause the box to move forward by pushing the box or backward by pulling the box. You see, the push or the pull that you exert on the box is called a force. In the absence of the push or the pull, the box, which is our system, will stay at rest. The box, which is our system, will stay at rest. You see, the box, which is our system, interacts with you, which is an external object found in the surroundings. So until the system, which is the box, interacts with you in the surroundings, a force will not be generated that will cause the box to either move forward, which is when it is pushed, or backwards, which is when it is pulled. So the little takeaway from this discussion is the fact that interactions between a system and objects in its surroundings create the forces that will eventually cause the system to either move forward when it is pushed or backwards when it is pulled. This is crucial. It is also important that a system can interact with more than two objects at once. And the direction in which the system will eventually move will depend on who is exerting the bigger force. This is important. Take for example a crate being pulled on the right and being pulled on the left by two different people. If the person on the right and the person on the left exert the same amount of force but in different in opposite directions the crate itself will not move think about the talk of war one group pulls to the right one group pulls to the left the group that wins is the group that exerts the bigger force that eventually caused the opponents to do what cross the line now it means that the system will eventually move in the direction in which the net force exists. It means that the system will eventually move in the direction in which the bigger force is asserted. So understand that this is really crucial. So suppose, for example, that a force of 40 newtons is applied to the right and a force of 80 newtons is applied to the left. The system will eventually move to the left because a bigger force is applied to the left. That means that the net force acting on the system is 40 newtons to the left. Now forces are vectors meaning that forces do have a size or a magnitude and a direction. So it is just natural for us to indicate that one direction should be considered to be positive and one direction should be considered to be negative. So naturally I will choose the right to be positive and the left to be negative, which means that if a force is negative that force is directed to the left. 
if a force is positive, that force is directed to the right. Hence, if we sum up the forces acting on the system, for example, if 100 newtons acts to the right and 10 newtons acts to the left, then the net force acting on the system is 90 newtons to the right. In so doing, we are able to calculate the net force acting on the system, which really is important.